All right, so now we're gonna take what I've designed in Figma and make this video. Now, I've tried to record this video a couple times now, um, and uh, I tried After Effects a little bit, I played around in there, and then a couple things in uh, Premiere Pro. Um, but I think that keeping this simple is gonna be best. Uh, so it might be a little bland, there won't be as much motion going on, but I think that's okay. I think it, because this is an educational video, uh, what I'm talking about will be the most important thing. So adding a lot of animation and, and stuff moving around isn't necessary and um, is actually could be distracting. So what I'm gonna do, I could have done this in PowerPoint and that probably would have worked too. Um, I could have done a PowerPoint and just recorded as I'm talking through my slides and have, have things come up as I go. Um, and that probably would have worked and that might be a better idea for future videos actually. Um, but I do have this already. I also have my audio file already. Uh, so there's some timings there that will be hard to mess with a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I am gonna take all this and just edit it in Premiere Pro. I'm gonna have each of these as a um, separate um, image and then do some editing in Premiere Pro to, to transition them. So I'm gonna highlight all of them and you can export uh, from Figma. Each of these are 1920 by 1080. That's exactly the same size as um, my video that I'm gonna make in Premiere Pro. So I can make this, um, you know, 2x the size, uh, 4x the size, uh, and then that'll increase that resolution because all this stuff is vector right now. Um, so, you know, if you have a really, really high resolution screen, you might want 4x, um, but it won't matter because it's gonna be exactly the same as, uh, as what's here in the video that I make. So I'm just gonna do this. I'll export 18 layers. I have 18 things here. Did it work? Yeah, okay. And I've got Figma and Webflow classes. Uh, let's drag this over here. Oops. Oh. Uh, let's do intro. This is what I need. What is the font? And let's make a new folder. Uh, Figma images. We'll do that. Okay, exporting. I hope. Hope that worked. <laughs> um, so let's go uh, bring over Premiere Pro. So now, let me double check that I got um, that set up. Uh, da -da, give me just one second here. Got my Figma images. I'm just going to drag my Figma images folder into my project and they should be there and they are, so perfect. Premiere Pro has a lot of different settings that you can do um, to, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Organize these things, this might be bigger or smaller. Um, the preview window might be bigger or smaller. I got this bin that I created, folder. Um, so um, this is where I'm gonna start to create the sequence. I also brought in my audio here, um, but let's start making a sequence. And now this is a lot of order because it was um, not numbered or anything like that. I think it's going by alphabetical order. So that's okay. This, I know this is the first one. We'll drag that onto the timeline. And when I drag that onto the timeline, the timeline will make this um, the settings of what that picture or video or whatever was. It'll take those settings. So you see I've got 1920 by 1080, which is exactly what I want. Perfect. Um, and I've got my first slide. What I'm gonna do is really quickly, I got, these are duplicates, so this will be, there we go. Um, let me, Organize these a little bit. Maybe I'll speed this one up uh, in post so you don't have to uh, sit through all this typing. Uh, 
All right, I think I got it all set up here. Uh, and let me go back to the project, bring in my audio, and let's get started editing this stuff. Uh, there might be a couple that are uh, out of order and we'll just have to find it when it comes up. But let's play the audio and see what we got. What is a font? Okay, I wanna do a little animation. I said I wasn't gonna do much, but we're gonna, we can do a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go to effects and I'm gonna type in crop. Crop is one where um, if I drop this on there, you can go to your effect controls. I like to twirl these up so I can just see crop and see the details like that. And um, you can crop from the bottom. What is a font? Okay, that's all I want to see, but I want this gray background. I'm going to actually hold down Alt or Option and then drag it up and it makes a duplicate. What I can do with this one, actually, that's the one I want on top, the bottom one, and delete that crop. And now I'm gonna make this huge. So huge that that disappears under the crop. Why did I do that? Um, so that I have, I'm just using the gray background, right? Um, from there, I could add a, um, I could add a gray background or something like that, but I was just lazy. That's an easy way to do it, um, to make this different sizes. I can make it so, made it way too big. I can make it small too. It's just that, that same image just blown up big so that it hides all that other stuff there. And because this one on top is cropped, then uh, it works. So we've got, what is a font? What is a font? Okay. Okay, and then here, I'm gonna click. Control K is what um, cuts, makes a cut. So now these are two different things. And on this one, I don't want that crop anymore. I want the whole thing. I can delete that crop. What is a font? Why should I care? Okay, perfect. Let's start with some definitions. Let's start with some definitions. My next slide. Oops. Let me zoom in to make sure that these are all lined up and they're not. Zoom in on Premiere Pro because sometimes when you cut and crop, things get weird. Font. Now I want to do a little bit more screwing around here. Um, I'm going to do also another copy. Control Alt or uh, Alt or Option. Duplicate that. I want font here. Um, I'm going to make this opacity low, yeah, uh, oh, because it's the same, it's duplicated. I'm going to drag this up so font is in line with that typeface one. Um, it looks like these are a little bit off too, but that's fine. Now. I know where it's aligned. I'm going to make it um, big, uh, the correct size. Then I'm going to crop, uh, drag, drag that crop on, and crop this. Oopsies. Crop from the bottom to there. And I'm going to do my same little. Oh, and I want to do crop from the top to get rid of that overall style part. And I want to do my old trick of making this gigantic. And there we go. Font is a common term when talking about typography. But the word font actually has a more specific meaning than what we normally think of. OK. Here's where I want to do a transition. Um, and now that what I want to do Control K. This new one. Um, let me see if I move my motion. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, and actually, I'll drop a keyframe. Make this move. 960 by 
what? I always forget these ones. 540? Does that make it look? Yeah. And 540, so that'll make it... The other word that's important to know is typeface. And here's where we're going to... The... Actually, <laughs> let's go... I'm going to press up. No, down. Oh, uh, it's not letting me... Oh. Okay, up and down will move you to the ends of the, where they're cut. But here, it's only... You see it's missing this one and this one? That's because this uh, targeting isn't on for track two. Now it'll do it for all the lines there. I can... Pressing up to go back, down to go forward. Um, so I'm going to do control K. The other word that's important. Wait, let me see. The other word that's important. Why does it look like it's. Looks like some lines came up, but maybe that won't happen when it renders. The other word that's important. Weird. Typeface, okay. Now this one, um, let's reset. You can reset all these. Nice. I want to do another crop on this. And bring all this all the way up from the bottom to there. Oh, you know what I, sh I need to do, actually? I'm going to hit Control-Z. I got I to gotta keep this one on the bottom, that, that blank one. But what I can do is uh, Alt, bring this one up. Now I can undo that and undo that, make that normal, and then crop this, go from the bottom. Now look at that. And then what we normally think of. The other word that's important. Is that cool? The other word that's important to know is... Is that cool? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you know what we can do? Just do it like this. No, 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 that's the wrong one. Do this. The other word that's important to know is typeface. There we go. That's what I want to do. Important to know is typeface. So what's the difference between typeface and font? Type. Okay. Now here is where typeface is the overall overall style, and now we can play with our crops again. Play with our crops, like uh, farmers should not play with their crops because that's their job. Uh, typeface. Now I'm getting confused between these layers, but I think this is the one. Typeface. Typeface is the overall style. In font. And this one, control K. Font is the variations on that. No, 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 wrong one. Font is the variations on that typeface. Typeface is the overall style. In font is the variation on that style. So for example, callous. Now we got. So for example, style. So for example, now we can do this. Control K. Calistoga, Playfair, and Montserrat. And I'm going to do crop. Highlight all these, drop a crop on all of them. We might not need it towards the end, but. Okay, from the bottom. Oh yeah, and I gotta do this again. My, you know what? I wonder if I just do that. So for example, Cal okay, Calistoga. Uh, yeah, I gotta dra drag this up just to Calistoga. Calistoga. Playfair. Now it's. Crop it up to Playfair. Playfair and Montserrat are all typefaces. Yes, they are. Mont 
Montserrat are all typefaces. And, you know, what if we did... So, for example, what if we did like this? Um, from the top. 33. Uh, from the top, 33. From the top, 33. We do like this. So, for example, Calistoga, Playfair, and Montserrat are all... So, for example, Calistoga, Playfair, and Montserrat are all typefaces. But within Montserrat... Okay. And then... What if we did... I'm just going to use this as the gray background. Um, so within Montserrat... And let's do like... An overlap here. And we do a... Um, Opacity to zero, uh, zero. And this one has a crop. Uh, and I want to crop just to Montserrat. No, not from the bottom. It needs to be from the top now. All the way there. Okay. Within Montserrat. Keep going. Okay, within Montserrat. So I need to move this transition, my two keyframes, there. And do, once I hit Montserrat, I say that. Um, now, I'm gonna drag this up one, am I gonna do that? I can do this, and I like this. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna do this, and I got a new, yeah, okay, fonts, this is where I need to go. Oh, did I do this wrong? Yeah, I did that wrong, and that's okay. Um, crop. Uh, yeah. I need this. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, keep moving. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now I need to move this up. <laughs> Look at that. Uh huh. Yeah, this is a little. Oh, oh, I needed to play with my. There we go. Now I'm getting the, um, that blurriness that I want. Let's move into 150. That looks okay. Close enough for me. What am I doing? Kind of doesn't make sense maybe, but um, let me see if I can explain it. I'm, I'm gonna make it kind of blend in. You'll see in a second. Um, okay, now I need this, 100%. Okay. Thin. So that's uh, fonts, yeah. Now, crop on this and thin. Okay, monster out thin. Perfect. There, monster out thin. There, monster out thin. Okay. And this one will have. Crop 
from the bottom. Oh, I gotta move the one on top, but that's, that's okay. Uh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Move that crop. You keep going. That's right, thin. Normal. Uh, and I call it normal, but we're gonna call it regular. And what we can do is now crop it like this from the bottom. Oh, come on. Come on. Um, I'm looking. This is the other thing with the playhead. You got to make sure your playhead's at the right part. And from the top. This is all stuff that probably I could have done better in PowerPoint, but I'm just using crops. Oh, that looks cool. I love when I impress myself with my own work. Uh, such a conceited thing to say, but it is fun. Oh, my background, it needs to be there. Bold. Italic. Italic. Italic or italic? I second guess myself. Air Montserrat thin, normal, black, bold. Wait, black, bold. Now here I can do, bring down that bottom, introducing bold, hide that. Bold, italic. Italic. And now, you. Italic, all different variations. Mm hmm Options on that same type. But within Montserrat, there are Montserrat Thin, Normal, Black, Bold, Italic, all different variations on that same typeface. Usually this doesn't matter when talking generally, are all typefaces. But within Montserrat... <laughs> oh, I, I see what I did here. Did I? I need to move this. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, do I see? Do I see what I'm talking about? Mm hmm. Position. Oh, let me do this. Let's keep that keyframe. Let's keep that nice keyframe where it's supposed to be. And then this one will be reset. Okay. Uh, where's that fade out happen? Here, those will fade out, and this will move up. But within Montserrat, there are Montserrat thin, normal, black, bold, italic, all different very all different. And let's do this. And we'll do full crop, or no crop. I can delete this crop, actually. And I'll do an opacity transition. Like this. All different variations on that same typeface. Usually this doesn't matter when talking generally. Okay, I don't like that big gap. I'm gonna click. Okay, I wonder if you can hear that. The mic's picking up on all this, but. Just clipping out some dead air. Different variations on that same typeface. Usually this doesn't matter when. Gonna trim just a little bit more. At that same typeface. Usually this doesn't matter when talking generally, but we'll be getting to some specifics. Again, a little bit of dead air. Um, I'm clicking A, by the way, to do this. A is the hotkey. And then I'm gonna get my arrow and control or shift, unselect the audio, and then just drag everything back so that I can do a little bit of editing here. 
Control K, erase some of this dead air. A again, pull this back like that. I, I face. Usually this doesn't matter when talking generally, but we'll be getting to some specifics. Now let's back up. Okay, now let's back up. I'm gonna drag these. We'll just be looking at this as I'm talking about that. Uh, and actually, um, let's just grab this. Holding down Option or Alt. Now let's back up. And let's do this. Kind of a review of what I just went over, even though it's just only been 40 seconds. <laughs> Just good to review. When talking generally, but we'll be getting to some specifics. Now let's, usually this doesn't. Okay, delete my crop, that's what's going on here. Usually this doesn't matter when talking generally, but we'll be getting to some specifics. Now let's back up. Why should you care about typeface and font in the first place? I'm gonna grab my trusty, oops, wrong button. Hold down, Option or Alt again. My trusty gray background. Let's back up. And uh, now let's back up. And I'm just gonna have a transition to a gray screen. Now let's back up. Why should you care about typeface and font in the first place? Here are a few things I want you to think about for a second. Do you choose different fonts? And here I don't have anything for these questions. These are, um, this is kind of, yeah. I don't want a lot of stuff. I could put the questions up, but. Why? In what situations? Yeah. Or maybe you just go with what the default font is on each program. That's totally fine. But why do you think these specific fonts were chosen as the defaults? In my opinion, there are three main reasons to care about typeface and font. Okay, now here's where we're gonna transition. That audio picks up. Okay, and three main reasons. Specific fonts were chosen as the defaults. In my opinion, there are three main... And guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna crop again. Reasons to care about typeface and font. Control K, drag it up. Uh, right, now, oh, gotta go back a little bit. A typeface and font. Aesthetics. Here we can do aesthetics. Structure. Control K. And font. Aesthetics. Control K again. I need two of these. Move the playhead over it. Structure. Structure and legibility. Buddy. Okay, and now this? I'll need it. Whole thing. Show the whole thing. Main reasons to care about typeface and font. <laughs> Look at, okay. You got to be careful when you do crops. This is why it's not always the best idea. A little bit. It looks like some dirt on my screen, but it's not. It's, uh, it's a bad crop. Got to crop it up more. Go up. Here we go. Now I'm just making make sure I didn't do anything else. There we go. The first is aesthetics. Okay. You know what? I'm just gonna be. This is crop, uh, crop masterclass. Uh, I don't know about masterclass. Crop, class. Crop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not a masterclass anyway. Make it really big again. Crop. Right from the right. Do do. The first is aesthetics. You might think my page or my course or my site doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to work. But even for the most cut and dry subjects, aesthetic. Now here's the boom. Aesthetics matter. Aesthetics matter. 
synthetics. There's where I make my cut. And take out that crop. Those cut and dry subjects, aesthetics matter. You might think that a machine is straight. And now I get into my... Aesthetics matter. You might... Th subjects, aesthetics matter. You might think that a machine as straightforward as an ATM wouldn't need an aesthetically pleasing interface. But actually, a study that compared two ATMs showed that the ATM with the better looking interface worked better. The authors wrote... Okay, here's where I can transition. The authors wrote... When two things are touching, you can right click that... Uh, when your mouse turns to this thing, you can right click and do apply default transitions. I'm going to drag it over to cover where I say worked better. The authors wrote the user may be strongly affected by the aesthetic. Not bad. Better looking interface worked better. The authors wrote. The I actually maybe don't like that as much. <laughs> Sometimes the, the uh, whatchamacallit, the transition is good. Sometimes I don't like it as much. I'm going to do instead. Again, using opacity, does almost the same thing. Make this zero. The authors wrote... Let me make this a little speedier. The authors wrote... That's still a little... There we go. The authors wrote, the user may be strongly affected by the aesthetic aspect of the interface. Even and you know what? I should put in the name of the study, darn it. Got to do that. We can do that. Even when they try to evaluate the interface and its functional aspects, and designers should strive not only to improve the inherent usability, but also the aesthetic aspect of the interface. Oh, you know what? The problem with this one is I have to export something else uh, because if I want to do that crop thing, I'm going to have to. Uh, I can't just crop this because it's not a plain background. It's this nice blurred. You know, I'm gonna do a couple, a couple different things, which is fine. I'm in my Figma. I'm zoom in on this if I can. Uh, control D, duplicate. Control D again, duplicate. Um, I'm gonna actually delete this whole thing and gonna delete this part. Okay. And call this um, ATM quotes blur, ATM quotes crop. This will actually make it easier on me. Uh, I don't even have to crop once I get into Premiere Pro. Export uh, two layers. Exporting, and yeah, Figma images. Uh, Blur and crop, here they come. I'm just gonna drag them. It'll go into my um, project folder. When I drag them in straight from another file, like from here. Um, so you can also just drag them straight onto the timeline, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, or I actually need crop first, then blur, then this. And now I'm going to take those keyframes off. Okay. So this is a little bit, a little bit weird what I'm doing. Unconventional, but sometimes that's the design, you know. The authors wrote the. Better. The authors wrote the user may be strongly affected by the aesthetic aspect of the interface, even when they try to evaluate the interface and its functional aspects. Now that we've got this, we can just. 
reduce all that. It's functional aspects. And designers should strive. <laughs> and designers should strive not only to improve the inherent usability, but also the aesthetic aspect of the interface. In other words. Uh, in other words. Uh, in other words, interfaces that look better function better. You know what we can do? In other words, interfaces that look better function better. I want to simplify that. In other words, <laughs> I can do like this, drag this, uh, blur. Uh, and I can do just slap on um, aesthetics look better <laughs> function better yeah, we could do that I look at figment to check all my parameters that was Montserrat itself Montserrat itself Uh, light. It was light. Um, control X. Duplicate. Control V. Wait, no, 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 sorry. Control V. Bring it down. Ding, <laughs> Interfaces that look better function. Function better. Okay. I want to line these up though too. That's good. Also, um, so actually, I should have thought about that a little bit before, but that's okay. I like the line, the alignment here in terms of the. Uh, what should we call it? Vertical alignment. You know what? It's probably close enough. Don't tell anyone I didn't measure it perfectly. They might never know. Look better, function better. Look better, function better. Look better, function better. When we're working with, with words, typeface and font make up a big part of the aesthetics. Okay. Da, da, da. Move everything here. And I'm going to just drag all this down. I don't like to have too much space below, empty space below. Whoops. Resizing here. And there's probably another. There's always like better ways to do things that I don't know about, but I'll just stretch these all out one by one to the playhead. Aesthetics. Aesthetics is relative, of course. Okay. We'll talk about when to use which fonts. More dead air here. Control K. Bring this back. Structure is not, we're not ready for structure yet until I think that cut. So line it up. I know I'm going kind of fast here, but depending on your skill level, or slow depending on your skill level. Aesthetics is relative, of course, and we'll talk about when to use which fonts. The next thing typography helps with is structure. Take a look at this page. Okay. Here we go. Take a look at this page. Take a look at this page. Not the content, just the structure. Should go pretty easy from here on out. What do you think? There's, there's nothing wrong with it. We can read through it without any problem. And because paragraphs and... So we spent a lot of time looking at the example, which is great, actually. I want to do... That's what I want to do. Spacing are used well. We can even skim it pretty easily. But... But if I just change the typeface of the headings, the structure. Typeface of the headings, and here's where I'm going to do this. The structure. Change the typeface of the headings, the structure becomes more apparent. And then, of course, we can change the size and. 
things, the structure becomes more apparent. I want to control K, give a little bit more breathing room to this. Because I want them to think, soak this in. The next thing typography helps with is structure. Take a look at this page. Okay. Not the content, just the structure. What do you think? There's nothing wrong with it. We can read through it without any problem. And because paragraphs and spacing are used well, we can even skim it pretty easily. But if I just change the typeface of the headings, the structure becomes more... Okay. But if I just cha change the type... The typeface, no, I want to change on typeface. But if I just change the typeface of the headings, the structure becomes more apparent. Okay. And then you can look, oh yeah, it does. And then of course we can change this. And then of course we can cha change. I want to cha change on change. And then of course we can change the size and bold them so that sections are even more clearly defined. By the way, the easiest and best. And here's where we're going to add a little something. The way to do this is by using heading styles, which we'll learn about in another video. The point is that changing type. face and font can bring out the structure of the page and make it much easier to read. I'm going to trim a little bit more. Control K. A little bit of air, dead air taken out. Here to read. Okay. Legibility is next. Boom. Drag it all across. Oops. Um... And I want to be like that so that sections are even more clearly defined. By the way, the easiest and best way to do this is by using heading, heading styles. And here's where I'm going to go. Styles. And I can't read it because it's white. But that's okay. Because I'm going to make it. Oh, let's just do black and <laughs> heading styles i can add a stroke i can add a shadow and where do i want this darn thing i should plan for this but i didn't so where do I put it? Where do I put it? With the color and the shadow and well, maybe I stroke a little bit bigger. I can kind of move this anywhere. But nowhere looks good. Um What if we just make it just huge? When in doubt, make something freaking huge. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Why not? Clearly defined. By the way, the easiest and best way to do this is by using heading styles, which we'll learn about in another video. The point is that changing typeface and font can... The point is that changing styles, which we'll learn about in another. Um, I'm holding down control, I'm just center this up right in the middle. Styles, which we'll learn about in another video. The point is that changing typeface and font can bring out the structure of the page and make it much easier to read. The last reason we should care about fonts and typeface is legibility. The main purpose of fonts is to be read, right? But the there's different kinds of reading. Okay, here's where we get our example. But there's different kinds of reading. Which of these two words draws your attention? Even though it's farther down the page, this one probably did a better job. Okay. I need a shape. All right, now take a few seconds to read e Okay. And you know what we can do is do like this, do like this, and this, and this, and drag, and dun, dun, dun. 
All right, now take a few seconds. Okay. All right, now take a few seconds to read each of these paragraphs. Let's actually give them a few seconds now. Attention. Even though it's farther down the page. Um, and you can do some shapes, like this one, shape. I'm going to do no fill. Yes, stroke. Stroke will be, the classic is red, isn't it? Is that good? Um, I wonder if the contrast on that is okay. We could do, we could do white. And that can be okay. I'll need two strokes. Yeah, I like that, that's fine. On the page, this one probably did a better job. This one probably did a better job. All right, now take a few. Which of these two words draws your attention? Even though it's farther down the page, this one probably did a better job. Uh, your attention. I'm gonna do, give it again, a little bit more space. This draws your attention. Even though it's farther down the page, this one probably did a better job. And let's make this just 10, yeah. All right. All right, now take a few seconds to read each of these paragraphs. That's a different kind of read. reading. And now the first one does a better job. Every typeface is designed with a purpose, and you can improve the legibility. Okay, and now we get that. And we can do a transition, actually. Let's do it like that. Let's see how that works. It's a better job. Every typeface is designed with a purpose, and you can improve the legibility of your documents by choosing the right typeface and font for the right occasions. So that's an overview about why I care about typeface and fonts, and by now I hope you do too. Okay. I think this looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to call it on this little video that I'm making that you're watching. Uh, I'm going to export this and that'll be it.